Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Uh, we're located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue. Uh, telephone number is 937-323-7508. This is our midweek Lenten service. Uh, join us on Wednesdays. Next week, uh, Sunday is Palm Sunday. Next Thursday is Monday, Thursday, and then Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday, the following Sunday. Confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. The St. John's Lutheran Church, we're now confessing our sins in midweek mid uh, service for Lent. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sins. We are truly sorry and humbly broken. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and our whole inside your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call ordained minister of the Church of Christ in Matthew Thor, therefore declare to the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Pastor is Pastor John Paul and can be reading the scripture. St. John's Lutheran Church, this is Lenten meditation. Sing Psalm 130, so you may wish to turn to that psalm at this time. Psalm 130.
knowing that all is now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 759, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Hymn number 700. <coughs> beloved hymn of the Christian church it's often sung at the end of Lent my faith looks up to thee faith in the cross faith in Jesus Jesus is preparing to come in to the uh, city we love studying that and Palm Sunday is this Sunday this hymn was written by Ray Palmer music by Lowell Mason American hymn 1808 late 1700s early 1800s my faith looks up to the wonderful beloved hymn of Christian Church.
the pit, repent thief simply asked Jesus to remember him uh, when he came into his kingdom. And instead, Jesus promises him, today you will be with me in paradise. The third word from the cross was a word of concern. Concern for his mother. That his mother would be taken care of after he left this earth. And so he said to his mother, uh, and pointing to the disciple who he loved, or mentioning to him, Mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And also in that action, we saw a foreshadowing of the Christian community. That the Christian community would be made up not of cousins, not of aunts and uncles, but that the community of faith is made up of brothers and sisters to Jesus Christ. That each one of us, no matter what our relationship is to uh, our family members who are part of the community of faith with us, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And just as Jesus made sure that his mother would be cared for, we as brothers and sisters in Christ are to care for one another. And it is a responsibility of all of us to be concerned and care for one another, pray for one another, support one another, comfort one another. Then we had the mysterious word from the cross, the most puzzling word to some, the word, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And we learned how when Jesus said these words, he wasn't simply quoting scripture, but instead he truly was feeling that abandonment of God as the sacrifice being paid for the debt of sin that we owe. And that as a holy and just God cannot be in the presence of sin, God at that moment had to turn himself away from his son so that the blood of his son would be the accepted payment for the sins that we commit and for the sins that all people have committed from that time and until Jesus comes again. All of these words from the cross have shown a concern for others and other situations. Tonight we have the first word in which Jesus asked something for himself. I thirst. As it's often translated in more modern translations, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. It was not a surprise that Jesus would say he was thirsty. Because crucifixion caused those who were being crucified to undergo a terrible thirst. When they first are nailed to the crosses and they would be placed in their position, the sun would be beating down upon them. The blood's flowing out of their wounds. They were coming to hydrate it quickly. We read how there was a strange darkness for three hours. And then after that darkness, the sun comes back out. And, the, and at the same time, because of the nails and the flesh and the terrible beating, a fever would break out into the condemned person's body and that fever would rage throughout their body. And so here it is as it's nearing the end of the day, Jesus is thirsty just like any human being would be thirsty. And so this request shows us the humanity of Jesus. It shows us that Jesus truly was suffering as any human being would suffer. His divinity was not sparing him of the suffering that everyone crucified underwent. So he was feeling the full brunt. And not only the full brunt of that crucifixion, but also the full brunt of carrying the sins of the world upon himself. And so he was going through far more suffering than any of us will ever go through, no matter what we might have. So Jesus says, Makes a simple request. And we are told that someone goes, puts a sponge into the sour wine, the wine that the soldiers were given to drink while they carried out their duties of crucifixion, while they stood there by the crosses to make sure nobody tried to take anybody down. They put that sour wine in a sponge and put it on a branch and lift it up to Jesus' lips. We see the full humanity of Jesus in those words and in that action. But very early in the church, before
before Jesus had been ascended that many years, a heresy broke out. And in this heresy, it said that Jesus never was truly human. That Jesus appeared to be human, but that was just a disguise. That Jesus was always just spirit. Always just about it. There was no humanity to it. And so they didn't even want to hear these words of Jesus from the cross, I thirst. And this heresy started gaining a lot of popularity. Contrary to what the gospel writers had said. Contrary to what the witnesses to Jesus' public ministry had said, that he was truly man and truly God. The heretics known as Gnostics wanted us to believe that Jesus was this superman, super being, and only appeared in the flesh of his head. An illusion to our eyes. And so John makes sure that he records those words of Jesus. Now, if the scholars are correct, and most seem to fall in line nowadays, the overall opinion is John was the last gospel written. Because there are other things that John puts into his gospel that seem to be direct attacks on the Gnostic heretics. And so it is assumed, or many think, that John made sure that he put these words of Jesus in there to emphasize that humanity, that humanness of Jesus, to counteract that Gnostic heresy that tried to say that Jesus was not truly human, that Jesus was truly human, suffered tremendously on that cross as that fever raged through his body as the sun beat down upon him. After this, Jesus knowing that all was now finished said to fulfill the scripture I thirst. The word finish it's interesting that John writes a sentence because this word finish actually helps explain or further explain that fourth word from the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou abandoned me? Because you see this word finished as it's used here. It's a different word than what Jesus will say when he uses the sixth word from the cross. It is finished or it is accomplished. The word finished here means to pay a debt. It means to be paid in full. To make perfect payment for some type of debt. My God, my God, why has thou abandoned me? Because Jesus at that moment was making the perfect payment for the debt of sin that all human beings owe God because of the sins we do. At that moment, Jesus became all sin in the eyes of God and his blood and by his Father abandoning him to make that sacrifice, Mary became the perfect payment, the perfect sacrifice. He's made that sacrifice so now he realizes everything is coming to a conclusion that his father sent him to do. So now he takes the time to ask for himself. I thirst. The word fulfills when it says it was to fulfill the scriptures. In Psalm 22 and Psalm 69, both messianic psalms do say how they gave me sour wine to drink. And talks about being thirsty. That word fulfill means to accomplish or to complete. So Jesus has accomplished and completed everything that his father wanted him to do. He has paid that perfect price of sin. And so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Now there is some question about this word hyssop. Hyssop was a, or is a, bushy plant in the Middle East. It was the plant that the Hebrew children in Egypt, so it's found throughout the Middle East and North Africa, it was a plant that the Hebrew children in bondage in Egypt were used to dip the blood of the Paschal Lamb in and paint his blood on the doorpost and little of their houses so that the angel of death would pass over. Some think John purposely used the word hyssop to make that symbolism. That this hyssop branch now is, instead of painting blood on doorposts for the annual Passover rite, was now being used to quench the thirst of the true Paschal Lamb, the final.
stalk strong <laughs> enough or long enough to put a sponge soaked in sour wine and hold it up to the lips of someone on the cross. So other scholars think, because some other manuscripts of John have a hand like the Synoptic Gospels have the, they have the term Aurea. And some Gospels of John have the term Apollo. Others have a word which is spelled almost exactly like Hissa, except for the last two letters. The word Hissa means a jab, which would make more sense because the Roman soldiers carried a jab. And so it would, be, it would make sense that the Roman soldier would take his jabs, stick it, the point into a sponge, dip the sponge into a cup or whatever of the sour wine and hold it up to Jesus. But no matter whether it was a branch, it is a, a reed, a pole, or a jab. What is important is for you to understand that when Jesus says, I thirst, when he is making that request, he is making a request to you. <clears throat> Jesus is asking for a help. First four words, he did not ask for anybody's help but God the Father. Now he's asking for your help. When Jesus, asked, when Jesus said, I thirst, he was not just asking for the physical ending to that thirst. He was not just asking that his parched lips be moistened and that he be able to suck a little bit of that sour wine out of that sponge and let it go down his parched throat. But he was saying, you can help me if you will. I need you. Will you come to me? Will you respond? Jesus is asking for our help to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. And in asking you for help, he is dramatically changing the understanding of the word holy. For example, Christian missionary in India was caring for a man who was sick. He became, his condition deteriorated so much that he, she needed to take him to the hospital. But she couldn't carry him by herself. By herself. So she went out the door and, and down about a half a block she saw two holy men sitting there chanting their morning meditation. So she went up to these supposed Hindu holy men and she asked them for their help. And she said she will never, ever forget the look of outrage in their eyes as they glared at her and responded to her, we are holy men, we never help anyone. In the religions of the world, that is expected conduct. Because if you're holy and you go help someone who's not holy, then you're contaminated. And you have to go through a long process to be back to being holy. Remember the par parable of the New Samaritan. The priest and the Levite go to the opposite side of the street and ignore the poor beaten up guy in the street because they're afraid he might be dead and if they would touch the dead corpse, they would be unholy and not be able to celebrate whatever festival it was they were going to Jerusalem to celebrate. And so they go to the other side. Jesus says that's not being holy. Being holy is being the good Samaritan. Being holy is not the two holy men sitting there meditating and chanting their redundant chants over and over. It is that missionary trying to get a sick man to the hospital. Jesus says, I thirst, I need your help. I want you, will you come to me, will you help me? He is saying to you, I need you to do holy acts for me. And what are those holy acts that we are called upon to do? Jesus tells us in the parable of the sheep and the goats. And he came and he separated the sheep from the goats, the sheep on his right. 
Philip was on his left. He said to the sheep, Come into my kingdom. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a cool water to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. And the sheep said, When did we see you, Lord? We never saw you hungry or thirsty or naked or sick. Jesus said, When you do it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do it to me. To the goats, he said, enter into the kingdom prepared for Satan and his angels from the beginning of time. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you did not visit me or comfort me. When did we see you, Lord? When you failed to do it for the least of these, my brothers and sisters. Jesus once again turns the world upside down. To be holy is not to refrain from foods and dress a certain way and chant a bunch of special prayers and verses and withdraw yourself from contact with common people. To be holy is to go out to the unchurched, to go out to the hungry, to go out to the thirsty, to the naked, to the sick, to the oppressed, to the downtrodden.
He died several hours later. After the old man had passed away, the nurses asked the young Marine, he said, can you tell us what your father's name was? To which the Marine replied, ma'am, this is not my father. I have never seen this man before in my life. And this nurse so much started said, well then why did you stay? And the Marine said, because he needed me. When Jesus says, I am thirsty, what he is saying to you, what he is saying to me, what he is saying to his entire church on earth, is I need you because there are people who need you. I need you to go out to every village, every hamlet, every town, to every continent, to every island, to every atoll, to every peninsula, to every isthmus. I need you to go every mountain and valley and share the good news with those who have yet to hear it. And not only share the good news, but with what you can do to meet their needs. So that is why our church is involved in things like digging wells in Africa. So the villages can have their own water supply instead of having to walk miles with buckets on their head to bring water back to their village for cooking and bathing and washing and clothes and so forth. That is why we open up schools. That is why we open up medical schools so that people in third world countries can learn how to be more healthy, to take better care of us. We do it all in the name of Jesus Christ so that their spiritual thirst will be quenched as well as their physical needs will be taken care of. So this fifth word from the cross, Jesus is asking for help and saying that he needs you ever bit as much as he needed that drink that first good Friday. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Fred and Donna Peer are the ushers. We're now looking at a tapestry which was made by Carla Moore. Carla Moore is totally deaf. This is her contribution for Lent. Beautiful tapestry of Jesus hanging on the cross. And you can just see him saying the words, I thirst, as Pastor Pollock preached on this last word, I thirst. And now we're all ransomed souls, ransomed by the blood of Jesus Christ, 
We repent, we believe, we love God, we love another, one another. We're ransomed by Jesus Christ. Jesus, as Pastor Pollock, I appreciate that he explained to me the Gnostic uh, heresy. I never really understood that before, that the Gnostics believed that Jesus was totally spirit and not totally human. But for him to ask for a drink of water is one of the things in the Bible that is against this, makes this heretical, makes this a, a heresy, the Gnostic heresy. You mentioned you, you missed our opening hymn this morning, this evening. This is uh, an evening service at 7 o'clock p.m. March the 25th, St. John's Lutheran Church. And our opening hymn was Day by Day, written by Carolina Sandelberg who is, is one of my favorite hymns, beautiful hymn, Day by Day, and you can find it in the Lutheran Book of Worship, 790. She was called the Fanny Crosby of Scandinavia.
Jesus promised us many things, including eternal life. Should we meditate on that during Lent? And we promise Him that we will be His Spirit on earth and do His will. us on YouTube. Turn on anytime. This is our midweek Lenten service. This is the last one you'll hear midweek Lenten service. The next thing will be passion will be the triumphal entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. Then will be Holy Week or Passion Week. Jesus Passion ends Holy Week. First we have Monday Thursday and we invite you to come worship with us two o'clock in the afternoon or seven in the evening. And we have Good Friday service. It's also two services. We invite you to attend St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Corner at Wittenberg and Columbia. We're right across the street from New Hospital, Springfield Regional Hospital. Then Easter Sunday, we will have 8 o'clock and 10.30 service. We invite you to come worship the resurrection of our Lord as he is, re is resurrected to eternal life. And he promises us eternal life as we receive communion. We are with him. He is never away from us. He will be with us to the end. He has promised these things. If we just repent, believe, love God, love one another, we are ransomed by his blood, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We pray for you and you pray for us in our ministry on YouTube.